Right, so if I showed you this phone, I'm assuming... Sorry, I hope... <laughs> to take them off. So if I showed you this phone, I'm assuming you know the brand that made it and probably the model also. Likewise, the same for this guy. By the way, in case you've been living under a rock, iPhone 13 Pro Max, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. But what's really interesting is that out of all the tech companies in the world, a whopping 41% of all smartphone purchases in the first quarter of 2022 were made up of just these two brands. And I think a lot of that is down to the sheer marketing budgets the two brands have and push, and also people buying what they know. You can't be disappointed if you know what you're getting, right? But I'm also well aware that some of you are getting somewhat, should I say, disenchanted with the developments of these two brands and might possibly want to look elsewhere, but don't know there's any other options or simply don't know where to start. But what if I told you, according to Wikipedia anyway, so take this with a pinch of salt, there are over 170 tech companies that are creating smartphones as of right now. So today I'm gonna to look at four brilliant smartphones from some of those manufacturers, three premium flagship and one more budget friendly that you've possibly never heard of and might be brilliant options for you if you are looking to swerve Samsung and Apple. Smash the like button if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe if you're new and want to be notified when I post those videos and thanks to Shox for sponsoring today's video. So first up, we have this guy, the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. And it has a secret feature that the likes of Samsung have been working on, but ZTE have got to the retail stage first. A feat in itself that's hugely impressive, but more on that in a second. So overall, the design here really is a killer hit. This really nice frosted matte black glass construction, sharp premium looking edged frames, and up front we have this gorgeous 6.8 inch 120 hertz AMOLED panel. It's got a peak brightness of 1500 nits and a resolution of 2480 by 1116. HDR 10 plus, and it really is a true edge to edge stunner. If you hate punch hole cutouts and notches, then this might be a fantastic option for you. But how have they done this? Well, up front, the 16 megapixel sensor is buried underneath the screen itself. Now, this isn't the first time that ZTE have experimented with this kind of tech, and it's getting better and better with each generation to the point now where I really can't, unless I'm right up close and I know exactly where this sensor is, I really can't see it. It really looks top notch. Excuse the pun. I didn't, I didn't even script that, but that is sensational. <laughs> So seriously clever tech here. However, the actual photo quality of that front facing 60 megapixel sensor is okay. It's passable, but it's still not great compared to the other top flagships around. There is still some slight blooming around light sources and it still looks somewhat slightly, should I say misty, but like I said, it's still passable. And if you're not a massive fan of selfies anyway, I know there are plenty of people out there, then again, you're getting all of that beautiful screen real estate with no interruptions whatsoever. Staying on cameras, if we flip to the rear, we have a very solid triple 64 megapixel array, primary, ultra wide and periscope telephoto with three times optical zoom and 40 times total. The ZTE Axon 40 Ultra is powered by the industry-leading Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, same as in the S22 Ultra if you're from the US, for example, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and all powered by a hefty 5,000 mAh battery cell. Seriously, for how sleek this phone is, the battery capacity is really impressive. Android 12 software with ZTE's My OS 12 over the top, 65 watt fast charging, up to 8K rear video, stereo speakers, and all for around 700 pounds dollars, etc. Conversion rates right now, not too sure. But right now we move on to smartphone numero dos. In case you were wondering whether I was going to continue speaking any more Spanish, unfortunately that is where my knowledge ends. <laughs> so the second phone on the list is a superb budget friendly option for those wanting a competitive device, powerful, decent camera, really nice design, but without the full bells and whistles and importantly for less. And if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. So again, we have this really nice frosted kind of black looking finish. It seems to be all the rage at the moment. And I'm for one, I'm a big fan. And up the top left hand side, we have a triple camera setup, 50 megapixel wide, eight megapixel, 120 degree ultra wide, and a two megapixel depth. So no telephoto lens, no optical zoom, digital only. But again, remember the price. 
It still feels really well put together, doesn't feel cheap by any means. It actually reminds me a little bit of the OnePlus 6 devices around that sort of era of OnePlus, and they were flagship phones at the time. Um, similar sort of size as well, 6.43 inch, 90 hertz, full HD plus AMOLED display. There's a punch hole cutout at the top housing a 32 megapixel sensor, and again, here is an example. This phone is also running Android 12 with Oxygen OS 12.1 over the top. And overall, it just pretty much performs as well as it looks. I don't think many people out there that would pick this up and have a play around with it will be able to tell you that this was half, if not more than half the price of the other flagships on the market. And a lot of that is down to the fact that we have the MediaTek Dimensity 1300 chipset here, which is really pretty impressive indeed, as can be seen by these benchmark scores. Not quite as powerful as the flagship premium Axon 40 Ultra, especially in those single core scores, but again, at around half the price, it's not too far off. 4,500 mAh battery cell, 80 watt SuperVOOC charging, and again, stereo speakers. It ticks a lot of boxes for that lowly price tag. Now, speaking of stereo speakers, if sound and music, for example, are important for you, then the product from today's video sponsor, Shox, might be of interest. These open run bone conduction sports headphones have a wraparound titanium frame with a comfortable silicon coating that is really nice and lightweight and sits over the top of your ears, ensuring a really secure fit, so excellent for sports and really anything that involves movement. The headphones rest on your cheekbones, so your ear canal is left open free from obstruction and sound waves bypass the eardrum. These are great if you need to have your wits about you, traveling through busy streets, crossing roads, exercise classes, sessions at the gym, etc. And for that reason, there's no surprise that these are England Athletics Race approved. In the box, you get the headphones and a charging cable, which allows for their new updated quick charge technology, 1.5 hours use from just 10 minutes charge and an eight hour total use from a full battery. Bluetooth 5.1, IP67 rated, and they have premium pitch 2.0 plus technology, providing surround sound, powerful bass, and a higher volume than before. The Shocks Open Run are available for £129 and come in blue eclipse like I have here, solar red, lunar gray, and cosmic black. Check the link in the video description below for more information on these headphones and purchase details in case you want to snap them up. Right, so back to the video. We have done one, we've done two. We're now on to three of four. And this phone, the Vivo X80 Pro, is quite possibly one of the most complete smartphones of this year. Absolutely packed to the rafters with specs like Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, 12 gigabytes of RAM, Android 12, IP68 rated, stereo speakers, and a gorgeous 6.78 inch, 120 hertz, Quad HD Plus AMOLED display with one of the best, if not the best, in-display fingerprint scanners around. Boxes smashed. I do think they could have possibly included a 5000 mAh battery, considering as well that the form factors of the ZT Axon 40 Ultra, for example, is pretty much, if not basically the same, 5000, 4700. So it's a minor point, but the big selling point with the X80 Ultra, that's not the name of the phone. <sighs> Too many names, too many phones. But the big selling point for the X80 Pro is the camera. The collaboration with Zeiss, famed for their work with cameras and lenses, is very much now in full swing. And the color science is definitely a key feature here. When using the Zeiss mode, it automatically adjusts the image to look more accurate to the human eye. Some people will absolutely love this more natural look compared to the much more saturated options on the market. But also if you're not a fan, you have the standard mode also. So it is nice to have that option. The portrait mode has also seen some improvements. Edge detection is on point and there's lots of simple customization, the use of extra filters, etc. that's really nice to play around with. But on top of all of this, the hardware is also really on point too. A 50 megapixel primary wide, 48 megapixel ultra wide, and two telephoto lenses, one periscope by design, providing two times and five times optical zooms, with a total of 60 times. We are looking at around a £1,000 price tag, but if you have the cash to burn and you want all of those killer key flagship features, then another really, really incredible option. And finally, the fourth phone on the list is the Honor Magic 4 Pro. And this is not only great for current Honor fans, but also current and ex Huawei users as well, as you're basically getting all of the really impressive Huawei hardware features, as Honor used to be under the Huawei umbrella. But now, since the two companies have split, Honor are not hampered like Huawei 
in the software department. So that means Android 12, Magic UI 6, and Google services, Google Play Store for all of your apps. And on top of that, Honor were famed for making mid-range budget devices under that umbrella. Now they are fully focusing on flagship premium phones. So this really is a top device. So it does have an uncanny resemblance to the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, and that's not a bad thing. Sharp, angular frame, beautiful rear panel, although a frosted coating would be my personal preference from a practicality point of view, and the lovely sloped waterfall edges of the 120Hz LTPO OLED panel. Again, we have the Snapdragon HM1 chip, a solid, if not breathtaking, 4600mAh battery, stereo speakers, and a really competitive camera array comprising of a 50 megapixel primary, 50 megapixel ultra wide, a 64 megapixel periscope telephoto with 3.5 times optical zoom, and a time of flight depth sensor. Another really top phone, cracking features, and one that you might not have heard of if you are looking for a new phone and want to ditch these. Don't forget to check out Shox's new open run headphones in the video description below. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Sub if you're new and love everything tech. And I think I might go off to the beach now. Love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>